Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all of the praises and the glory to the Most High and the Son, Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. And um, double honors to the apostles of the great millstone that have taught me what I know, including the bishops on down. And Yahweh Bashim Yahushai Rakatham to um, the elect. And basically, I just want to just jump right into this real quick. Because, <clears throat> you know, in, in the video that I did last time, I addressed um, something at the end of the video, almost at the end of it. And I mentioned that you have these caps that are sporting the t-shirt with the fringes on it. On well, cases, you'll find primarily, um, like, as you can see, the Sakari and as well as the IUIC. You know, they'll either wear t-shirts or they'll even wear a hoodie. And they will have the fringes on it. And <clears throat> when we go out and teach the word of the Lord, we are supposed to represent the most high in totality. So when people walk past, however they see you, they see you as a representative of the Most High Himself. Being that we were all called by the Most High, and now we claim that we're all men of the Lord. So, you know, as a man of the Lord, a man of the Lord is going to have a gate about him that he is such. And, um, you know, I got some scriptures to justify my point of view on this because. The first scripture that I want to read is this. Jeremiah 6 and verse 16. Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, stand ye in the way and see and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way and walk therein and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said we will not walk therein. So <clears throat> this is going out to the Israelites that were there at the time, of course, but this applies to this very moment in time because the old ways is basically acknowledging the commandments and to do them. Now, back in the ancient world, if we were to go back 3,000, 2,500 years ago, or even 2,000 years ago, um, you didn't see none of our people wearing no T-shirts, wearing no hoodies with the fringes on it. This is this is something that newly came in. Okay. Now, it became a thing around as they have it over here, as Esau elaborates on where the, excuse me, when the t-shirt was invented. It's the, you know, as they have an Edomite woman which is given a, a an example of what a t-shirt is. And as it reads, um, a t-shirt is a style of fabric shirt named after the t-shape of his body and sleeves traditionally it has short sleeves and a round neckline known as a crew neck which lacks a collar t-shirts are generally made of stretchy light inexpensive fabric undergarments used in the 19th century and in the mid 20th century transitioned from undergarments to general use casual clothing so that's really originally what it is it's basically an undergarment now there's nowhere in the scriptures that says that which was geared towards our forefathers um the words that were spoken by the prophets especially moses in commanding the israelites he never told them to put the borders of blue and the fringes on your undergarment <clears throat> okay it's not in there because they weren't wearing that now and let me even read this as well. This is Deuteronomy 8 and verse 5, which is really the old way, which is what Jeremiah was re referencing to. Thou shalt also consider in thine heart, in other words, the mind, that as a man chastened of his son, Suakia, uh, verse 6, uh, therefore thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy power to walk in his ways and to fear him. Exactly. To walk in his ways. And what are his ways? Now, when you read the book of Daniel's, the seventh chapter, 
Daniel is seeing the most sire in a vision. And as this reads over here, I beheld to the thrones were cast down, representing the ancient empires that he had in the vision as well, which came down. And the ancient of days did sit, because the ancient of days represents him bringing in the kingdom. <coughs> Whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. And his thrones was like the fiery flame, and his wills as burning fire. So it mentions whose garment was white as snow. So the term garment is from the Hebrew word for God, which means covering or clothing. So what we're wearing technically is, isn't really clothing because if you look at this woman, she's wearing a t-shirt and she's wearing some jeans and you can see her whole entire shape with the t-shirt on and with the jeans. Now, a robe was basically what you would really call clothing because when you would put a garment on, um, especially the men, it would cover the shape of their body. All right? So realistically, the stuff that we're wearing isn't really real clothes. Basically, just to mention. So our fathers... And as well as the Heavenly Father, we're nowhere near in sight wearing or sporting t-shirts with fringes and, and robes. Okay? So that's that's just that right there. So you guys, y'all, y'all gotta um repent and, and um change, which you know a lot of you guys ain't gonna repent. Y'all are gonna keep doing what y'all are doing. Now, just to make things just um I know that there's brothers that are sincere that truly believe in this thing. And that's all right. If you are the elect, you're going to change. And you're going to follow the true ways of the living power. As we as we do here at Great No Stone. Now, if you look at us at Great No Stone, um, brothers usually are wearing the robe, the long robes. Because, again, it goes back to what we as a whole should represent. And what is that? To represent the Most High Himself. That is what the Israelite man is supposed to do. Okay, so as what was said in the book of Deuteronomy 8 and 6, let's read it again. <clears throat> Therefore, thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy power to walk in His ways and to fear Him. So if we're walking in the ways of the Lord, then in like manner, we're going to look like him. It's automatic. <laughs> okay. And as well as it reads too. In the book of Deuteronomy 6. Let's even bring that out. Actually, you know, let me see what I can do. Yeah. Uh, yeah let me do this. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Deuteronomy 6 and verse 4. <clears throat> Hear, O Israel, the Lord our power is one, and thou shalt love the Lord thy power with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all of thy might. So if we're doing this, and once again, we're going to be looking just like how the Heavenly Father wants us to look like. Like Father, like Son. Simply put, just like I showed you in the book of Daniel 7. Um, one of the ways of the Lord, as what was seen, is the fact that he was wearing a garment. All right? Basically, what Daniel saw was a so-called black man wearing a robe, a garment. <clears throat> All right? I'll read it again. I beheld to the thrones were cast down. In the ancient of days did sit whose garment was white as snow and the hair of his head like the pure wool. Now who on the earth has the woolly hair is the soul called Negro. The tribe of Judah, those that be 
the tribe of Benjamin, those that be, and as well as the tribe of Levi. These are the three southern kingdom tribes, which are indeed so-called Negroes today. And they have that textured kind of hip <coughs> primarily. Now, some of the Latin tribes may have that textured hair too, but primarily the southern kingdom. Okay. So, again, the most high, even in the heavens, was wearing a robe. Now, let's even read what Yahweh Shah looked like. Again, this is a vision of John the Revelator. Verse 13. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, which the seven candlesticks represents the seven churches of uh, Asia Minor. Um, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. See? So we got the Most High, and as well as we have Yahweh Shai, which, as it is seen, wearing the robe. So when you're wearing a t-shirt, <clears throat> what you're basically stating is you're in the world still, calling yourself Israelites. What you're doing is, is you're declaring yourself to be um, in the middle. Excuse me, in the middle. They don't really have the goal is to actually go out there and wear the robes and represent the way of the Heavenly Father all the way and through. They don't have the courage to do it. So therefore, you know, there's a little bit of, of that sense of feeling of embarrassment, maybe, <clears throat> why they don't do it. But either and or, the thing of it is, we're supposed to renounce all things which has nothing to do with the scriptures, all right? And then to put on all things which is in the scriptures so that we can become like our power. Again, when people walk past us, they see us as men of God. That's what we're supposed to be showing and demonstrating, <clears throat> all right? So um, let's get some more precepts. Let's get the book of, Numbers 15. I don't think I've read this, but maybe I have done it. But I'll read it again if I did. Uh, Numbers 15 and 38. Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the border of their garments. It doesn't say t-shirts. It doesn't say undergarments. It said of their garments. Throughout their generations. And that they put upon the fringe of the border and the ribbon of blue. So you would do this with your garment. In other words, your robe. Okay. Which is going to be your covering. Of your whole body. And it will go all the way down to the foot. Like how our power looked. In this case, your Howard Shah, our Lord and Savior. So technically. <clears throat> you know. I can't put it any other way. If we're coming back to being Israelites, we have to look like Israelites. What did the Israelites look like? They look like the Most High. Their spirit, <clears throat> you know, their level of discipline. And in this case, you know, right now, we have the scriptures in our hands. They're supposed to break the scriptures down correctly. And by their clothing, they're supposed to demonstrate, again, what it means to be the sons of the living power. All right? Just like, the, just like it reads in the book of the Apocrypha, in the book of Sirach, if I'm correct. It mentions that a man be, may be known by his look or his gait. And the way that these dudes look, and I'm not going to, like I said, I'm not getting on everybody that, that wear the t-shirts because you got guys that in these various camps that have been influenced by um, Sakari or they've been influenced by the IUIC at the same time, you know, or they may add a little seasoning of Ashi Bikane on that. <clears throat> and then you have their camps. But, you know, again, we're not here to do these lessons to make fun of people, whatever, whatever. Now, if it comes across, we're making fun of you, then basically 
you just got to change, brother. You just got to change. That's all it really takes. Okay? Because you already know, man, Um, us great millstone, we don't play about when it comes to the way and the truth and the life, which is Yahweh Shai, as it is written, Um, that the whole book is written of him, Psalms 40 and 7. We don't play around with this stuff. We take this very seriously. And if we have to look silly, foolish on the streets, then that's so be, man. Oh, as it is written, that the foolishness of the Most High is much more wiser than men. <laughs> All right, so it's better to be a fool for the Lord than to be a goddamn fool in the world, man. Where the Lord is just looking at you in this thing. Okay, I'd rather, I, I, I'd rather be that instead. I'd rather be a fool of the most high. <clears throat> you know, people may walk past and say, these people are a bunch of bug outs, crazies, wearing robes. Okay, fair enough, cool. The Lord said to do A, B, and C. So if this is the repercussions we're going to get, then guess what? As it is also written, we're giving a sacrifice, man. We're sacrificing our time. We're sacrificing ourselves. And um, it's, all for the, it's all for the good at the end. Because we're doing it for Yahweh Shah that died for us on, on the cross and paved the way so that we can be reconciled. So it, the least we can do is to basically repay him back because we're indebted to Yahweh Shah. So... Again, we just got to just do what's written, man, and overcome whatever it is what you feel as to why you don't want to wear the robes or you may feel some kind of ashamed of your culture, okay? Because the t-shirt thing, that's something that Edomites came up with, man. They made it casually to be worn, as I've just read to you in the book of not in the book of the Wikipedia. <laughs> it's a lock here. But yeah, Esau made it to be worn casually, man. Around the 19th century, 20th century. You get the gist. So again, man, we gotta renounce all things that the that the enemy have, have put up that have put upon us and as well as to believe. And be born again, man, and come as Israelites. Because this t-shirt stuff. It just demonstrates that you're just, you're not sure of yourself, whether you want to believe in your house shy. And then there's, a, there's another part of you that has this kind of um, interest in the world. You know, you want to believe in the most high, but then there's an interest for the world at the same time. Oh, let me read, let me read this as well. Let's get Matthew's uh, six. Let's get the book of Matthew 6. <clears throat> no, nah, it's Matthew 5. Yeah. yeah, so this reads, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. There you go. So how do we be perfect? Just follow the book, what the book is saying. It's very simple. Very, very simple. It's not, it's, it's, it's not a rocket science. It's not to be made overly complicated. It's just as simple as 1, 2, 3, A, B, C. Keep the sayings of the book and you will become the book and when you become the book you become like your power that's what we're supposed to be like yeah it's Matthew 6 
verse 24. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve the most high mammon. Exactly. So when you're wearing those t-shirts, once again, what are you showing? You're demonstrating through your actions that you're not fully persuaded. You have to be fully persuaded in this thing, so much so that. The world is forgotten about and the things of it. Now, when you first come into this truth, I understand that um, it's going to happen due time that you're going to be the image of what the truth represents is going to be in due time. Like, you, know, you can't expect brothers to just come into the truth and automatically they're on a level of, of someone that was in it for like 10 years. Like, no, things take time. <clears throat> So it's going to take time for men to gradually change after the manner of, of what they're a part of. It's understandable. You see, but again, this is not the look. This ain't, this ain't the look of a man of the Lord. This is a look of someone that's in between. Lord is about you acknowledging him all the way with all. I just read it to you. With all of your mind, acknowledge him. All right? And this does not project that. It projects... Again, that one is a half-ass artist. So that's all I have to say with this. I want to give all of the praises and the glory to the Most High and the Son. Yahweh Bashim Yahushua Bashim Rakaak Wadash and double honors to the apostles of the great millstone that have taught me what I know, including the bishops on down too. And with that, I say Shalom and Salakia for not putting any lessons up in a matter of time. Along, you know, I would say, <clears throat> you know, a certain amount of days. So, Lord willing, um, this was edifying. Shalom.